hey guys in this video we are looking at meiosis and mitosis i'm going to talk you through in detail each of the processes i'm going to show you a couple of quick ways you can remember the difference i'm going to show you some example six month answers and then at the end i'm going to go through a really really common exam question which is the differences between them so everything laid out really really clearly for you with some beautiful pictures not drawn by me It is crucially important in biology that you remember the spellings and the differences between meiosis and mitosis. I have seen beautifully written six mark answers, um, getting absolutely no marks because they forgot to put a T in mitosis, which makes it impossible for the examiner to talk about and um, to understand whether you're talking about meiosis or whether you're talking about mitosis. So mitosis has this lovely T in it, which means it goes into two cells. Meiosis does not have a T in it, which means it is not going to go into two cells. It is going to go into four cells. Mitosis happens in my toeses, and meiosis happens in my ovaries. Um, so there we go, a couple of different ways that you can remember the differences between them. The cell cycle starts with a cell in interphase, where it spends quite a lot of its time. Um, division cell division doesn't actually take very long. The majority of the time, the cell is just sitting there waiting. When the cell is ready to divide, it needs to duplicate its DNA so that there is one copy available for each new cell. Once the DNA is copied, it then can then go on to form chromosomes, which have separate arms. When it's starting to go into mitosis, this is called prophase. You can see here that the spindle poles, which were together over here, are starting to separate. They're starting to move around either side. And our chromosomes have gone from a big bundle of DNA um, into the structures that we can see here that we're familiar with, with the duplicated DNA and the arms. Once prophase is a bit more progressed, you can see that the nucleus, or the, the nuclear envelope, which keeps all the DNA in place, has gone. So it is broken down. That these poles here have moved to the other side, and all the chromosomes are starting to line up in the middle. And you can see half is attached to one side, and half is attached to the other side. While the chromosomes are waiting to line up in the middle, while they're waiting to be attached, you see that this one, this one, and this one are attached on both sides, whereas this one here isn't attached. This one will be signaling the cell that it's not ready to divide. As soon as all of the chromosomes are lined up in the middle and are attached to both sides, the, the stop signal will be turned off, and that is how the cell knows it is ready to divide. The spindle poles will then pull each half of the chromosome to one side of the cell. Once the DNA is safely at each side of the cell, the membrane around the nucleus will start to reform and the spindles will start to disassemble. And you'll see that the uh, cell has started to pinch in around the middle. Once the process of forming the new membrane around the nucleus has been completed, you will get cytokinesis, which is the separating of uh, the cell into two new cells. And you can see these look very similar or the same as the cell we had at the beginning. Because what we are going to end up with is two identical cells here. The cytoplasm has divided, the DNA has been copied and separated evenly down the middle. We have two cells that have exactly the same DNA as the cell that we started off with. I'm going to go through all the important points you need to include in a six mark answer talking about mitosis. I'm going to do it in bullet point format here for where we can save a bit of time. But please, please, please remember in your exam, if this is your course you've written communication question, you have to include full sentences. We're talking full stops, capital letters, and make sure you get that T in mitosis. So mitosis happens in asexual reproduction. So we're talking um, strawberry plants, we're talking spider plants, any plants that grow like that, or we are talking about cloning. It can be used for 
repair of cells or it can be used for growth. So um, when you cut yourself, you're going to be using mitosis in your skin cells to repair that cut or if you need to do a lot of growing. It happens in your body cells. It does not happen in your gonads. So that is basically every single cell in your body apart from your ovaries or your testes. The daughter cells are going to have the same number of chromosomes. As the parent cells and they are going to be diploid. which for humans is going to give them 46 chromosomes. They were going to be identical. So there's no variation, no reassortment of anything that is going on. We're going to have two cells produced And there is going to be one division. Early meiosis looks very much like early mitosis. We have our spindle poles moving round to separate and we have our chromosomes, our DNA all bundling up and getting ready to divide. One difference is that before they start dividing into new cells, what they're going to do is they're going to find their pair. So say here the purple ones are from the, uh, the male parents and the, the orange ones are from the female parents. So chromosome 1 from the mum and chromosome 1 from the dad are going to find each other and line up. They are going to duplicate their chromosomes. So here we can have four chromosome number 1 from the mother, from the father, and they've each been duplicated. What they can then do is swap little bits of their um, chromosome. So you can see here that the um, purple end has been swapped over with the orange end. This is just to increase diversity in things. They are then going to line up and each pair of chromosomes is going to be connected to a spindle pole and they're going to get pulled apart. This is where we have a big difference with mitosis because instead of each arm of the chromosome going to each side, we have a whole chromosome pair going to each side. This will then start to separate out into two new cells. The spindle that pulled them apart is going to disassemble. And we're going to get two new cells formed. Each cell is only going to have one copy of each chromosome. Some of these chromosomes are going to be from the mother and some of these chromosomes are going to be from the father. Each of these two new cells are going to form a spindle. The chromosomes are again going to get attached to the spindle and line up down the middle. And then the chromosome arms are going to get pulled apart. So each new cell is going to end up with one chromosome arm. In the end, what you will end up with is four different haploid cells. Here are all the important points you need to include in a six mark answer about meiosis. Again, this is going to be in bullet point format. When you come to write out your quality of written communication answer, please, please, please make sure you write everything in full sentences. So meiosis is involved in sexual reproduction, which means the cells that are going to be produced are going to be gametes. So that is going to be your egg. Or your sperm. It is going to happen in your gonads and only your gonads. So we are talking about your ovaries or your testes. You are going to have half the number of chromosomes. And we can call this haploid. In humans, that is going to be 23 chromosomes. 
Now these cells are not going to be identical. There's going to be variation because reassortment has taken place. There are going to be four cells produced. And there are going to be two divisions. A common question that is asked is the differences between mitosis and meiosis. So mitosis occurs in the body cells. Whereas meiosis happens in the reproductive organs. So the difference between mitosis and my ovaries. Um, with mitosis, we are going to get normal body cells produced. And in meiosis, we are going to get gametes produced. In mitosis, we have one division. And in meiosis, we have two divisions. In mitosis, we get two new cells produced. And in meiosis, we get four new cells produced. In mitosis, they have two sets of chromosomes. We can say they're diploid and in meiosis they have one set of chromosomes. We can say they're haploid. In mitosis they're going to be identical to the parent cell. And in meiosis they are not identical.